least 20 Ospreys against the Sinesi Scarlets. It's a gem of a day, and it's a gem of an occasion, my call. Full house, everything to look forward to. Yeah, I think certainly, you know, it's, it's great to see the now full traditional sort of Boxing Day encounter between these two full sides, you know, both of them. It's difficult to assess where they are in form terms. They're, you know, one team's beating poor Scottish opposition, the other English, but today form was out the window. It doesn't matter. It's all about who wants it the most. It's going to be a roar of battle up front, and uh, looking forward to it. Welcome to Scrum 5 Live. Uh, it's also a big day for the coaches. Stuart Davis has been talking to them. Well, a compliment to the season, guys. Uh, it's the Scarlets at home, then. That's what uh, Boxing Day Sport is all about, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, the crowd outside waiting to come in, and uh, we had a similar similar event last January down at Straddy, and uh, it was a great team of rugby that night. Uh, we had Watton Row game when we went down to, to Straddy, where uh, the guys were at the top of the game, and uh, just goes to show the local derbies are uh, always close, close fought things. And uh, Scar's got the uh, nod that particular night, uh, but it's a, it's a year on now, and uh, hopefully we can uh, just reverse that. One, the holds it's one game the whole of Wales is looking forward to, but uh, it's a serious business of winning for you with that lead disappearing in the Celtic League now. Oh, you know, we just don't, we don't look, we look at the, uh, the Celtic League and how many points we are ahead or behind. It's just uh, every game comes and uh, we want to keep on improving our, uh, our performance and uh, making sure we become a better team for for the bigger challenges ahead in, in two years to come, but uh, you know, we'll just be pushing on and uh, you know, today's a, a big game again, as they all are, and so they all should be. You talk about performances, Gareth, your side have certainly been improving of late. Has it given you the confidence that you need to come to a place like the Nall and pull off a win? Well, it's nice to think we're playing better in December than we were in September, for sure. Um, I don't think coming to occasions like this, form has got that greater bearing. I think the traditions that overwhelm maybe the current uh, state of play. Uh, it's nice to think we've got a couple of wins behind us because confidence is important in the sport. But this occasion is set up, there's no doubt at all about it, the uh, local rivalry and um, the locality of the support. It means there's going to be a full house here today. Uh, the passion and pride will be in place and I think it's going to be a great afternoon for, for everybody concerned. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a cracker. Can I say that? Back to you guys. Fun to avoid at Christmas, do you find? Anyway, the Ospreys against the Scarlets, Mike. Yeah, familiar look to a Dirty Mick fullback there. It was Shane Williams, 25. Nice matchup in the centre, isn't it? Parker with Gavin Henson playing at 12. So low. Matthew Jones, who's been improving at 10. With Jason Spice at 9, who makes everything tick for the Ospreys, I feel. The Ospreys pack mobility, as always, is the watchword. Ryan Jones at number 8. No van for him. The international second row pairing. No Adam Jones, Andrew Millwood on the tight head. Barry Williams, back from injury. Yeah, if you look at the Scarlet's back line, no Barry Davis at full up, but Garen Evans getting the run there, again, pace on the wings. Fino Matthew Watkins, probably the form player in Wales at the moment, and then Gareth Bowen, who is slightly better than Henson in the kick-in, and Peel as well, who's, who's great form at the moment. It's all about experience up front. The 36-year-old Dave Hodges back into the back row. Huge experience in the second row, Chris Wyatt, Vernon Cooper, and age up front. Robin McBride, 34, Dave Hewitt, the incomer from New Zealand, 33. Okay, the stage is set here at the Knoll. Christmas spirit in the terraces, but Mike, perhaps not so much good cheer on the field. And for both teams, you know, it is a festive time of year that it's all about the attitude, the, sort of the, the fitness and the spirit that those players can generate in a local derby. Big crowds, big white hot atmosphere out there. For me, I think it's going to come down to who's, who's the best in the goal-kicking department, and I just fancy Henson, big match player. He pulls it off. I, I think he could win it for the Ospreys. Ospreys are on top of the table. Scarlets on a winning run. Who's going to win? Uh, I'm going to go with the Ospreys. I think that, uh, you know, at, on their home patch, they're sort of in a much better form, I think, than, uh, than the Scarlets. And uh, the Scarlets, I feel, is still brittle up front. And if the Ospreys really get into them up there, with Barry Williams back as well, Millwood, you know, Ryan Jones, Richard Pugh, I think that they could, uh, they could cause some problems behind what's that decent ball. The last stir of the brew in the changing rooms. Let's join our commentary team, Jonathan Davis and Gareth Charles. Thanks very much, Ed. Yeah, the team is coming out, but Jonathan, you know what it is to be here at the Knoll in the red of Tennessee. And, and the black of Meath, if not the Ospreys, isn't it great to see the place full? 10,000 players. Yeah, it's a great uh, atmosphere. The pitch is in good condition. Um, it's a slight win, and I believe Tennessee have won the toss and will play against the wind in the first half. Um, but as Gareth Jenkins said, Clancy will come up here, just up the M4, and they want to win. Ospreys are the form side, everything seems to be going well for them. But if any, you know, the Scarlet's back, you know, maybe not the perfect balance in the back row. Jonathan Mills is playing open cider, and he might be a, 
a yard slower than Richard Pugh, and that could be a big, you know, a big influence on it. But um, I just do feel that the Ospreys have got just got that edge behind. That's the thing. That's what they've been put inside the way this year. It's Nettie maybe haven't. But Celeste Fina will be instrumental in coming down the 10 12 far now. It's going to be a big, big game. Barry Williams back after a rib injury to lead his team. They need that leadership. And one of the men in form, Gavin Henson, had a couple of great games in Europe as well as in the Celtic League. Yeah, against, I think against uh, the Harlequins, Gavin Henson was magnificent. He's awareness of space around him and uh, you know Jonathan Thomas will be happy to get back you know he wants to uh, he wants to break into that Welsh 22 once again and one thing you know I am glad that we've got a Welsh referee Nigel White you know we've been having a lot of the Scottish referees which uh, you know, I am being particularly happy with it's nice to have a referee you know from down the road who knows the atmosphere knows the intensity knows the rivalry between these two regions and uh, hopefully you know he'll be uh, have a big part to play by not blowing his whistle too much but uh, everyone's looking forward to an absolutely fantastic game of rugby perfect conditions let the festivities begin perfect conditions on boxing day sun shining the snow has disappeared and let's see the sparks ignite on the field as the Ospreys top of the table against the Scarlets who climbed and clambered their way back up away, to sixth position with a bit of a run of form three wins in their last four games exactly opposite to the Ospreys as far as the Celtic League is concerned three defeats in four games for them he kicked it from the advantage he lost the advantage a very cle clever start by uh by the Ospreys, you know, knowing that Havili is the chaser, catches the ball, feeds it blind to Spice, no pressure on him. That's a great take by David Hodges. Go on, there we are, there we are! Stay out! Dwayne Peel gets the box kick going immediately. Plenty of time though for Elder Sebayali to take it quite comfortably in the end. Quite difficult for some of the players taking the, the high ball because there are shadows because there's a low sun. And Elvis Sevali leaves the kicking duties to Matthew Jones, who doesn't come up trumps and gives the Scarlet skipper Garen Evans a chance to run back at them. But as he slips into the clutches of Richie Pugh, the Scarlet forward try and take it on themselves. Peel looking for more runners, and it's Hodges who presents himself up to the Ospreys 10 meter line. That's better presented ball for the Scarlets. And well protected as well. Peel, Gareth Bowen, change of mind and a hammering as well. James Bate was in there. The big tackle. Matthew Watkins tries to go for open space. Ryan Jones is the one back covering. Numbers on the short side. Have they got the confidence to keep ball in hand early on? That's a lovely run from Matthew Jones. When outside his man, it is Phil John the prop who is out there. And the two of the forwards supporting him. But Matthew Jones knew he had the pace to go. Yeah, first turnover, and this is where it's dangerous. But keep an eye on, on Wyatt. You see Wyatt, they just can't see him. There he is, he's pushing Durston into touch. If he'd attract on the inside, there was the inside ball, but that is the danger of the overlap. Jones straight out to Sonny Parker that time. The first touch to Shane Williams. There go the dancing feet. The pace not enough to get around Talaselli, who has uh, shown his mettle in that number 11 shirt for the Scarlets of late. And they brought down his option number. The Scarlets want to get away with it quickly, but Nigel Whitehouse not quite happy. Good early ball. Long miss one. Give it early. One on one. Finch to come inside. Got the outside. That's good defensive work by Talcelli. He backs his pace, he uses the touchline as the extra defender. Well, it's the kind of opening we had hoped for. Both teams looking to attack the Ospreys in particular in these opening three minutes. And if Barry Williams is an important man back in an Osprey shirt, Robin McBride, more so for the Scarlets. He finds Chris Wyatt. 
Greenfield has had a look but the, the Scarlets having to shield their eyes there and Peel has kicked his charge down by Barry Williams who had no idea where it had gone afterwards and Gareth Bowen away and he's the one who cleared the danger in the end No, no, but before kick-off I did mention that Nash had won the toss and uh, they would play against against the win but uh, Stuart Gallagher told me that but clearly he has no influence on the side whatsoever and has given me the totally wrong information <laughs> Because <laughs> I think they must have won the toss and decided a kick. And they've got the slight win at, it, at their backs. Lock on, that, sun, that winter sun is very, very low. It'll be in the eyes of the Scarlet in the first half and it'll have disappeared, I dare say, by the time they swap round for the second. Yeah, no, he's gone then, yeah. It is difficult to deal with and... No, he's gone. The Scarlet's he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. looking to keep it away from the danger zone as much as they can in these opening stages. Oh. Nice kick from Gareth Bowen. And it's gone down in the direction of our man on the touchline, Stuart Davis. Yeah, thanks very much, Gareth. Well, uh, you're right to point out McBride. Don't underestimate the effect he'll have on the Scarlet side. He's up against Barry Williams, who apparently was very, very close to missing this game with a rib injury of all things. So he'll be tested in the scrums by Robin. And word is they're going to have a little look at Matthew Jones outside half. Fino in the centre, expecting to run hard down the channel. Thanks, Stu. No chance to expand that time with Richie Pugh lurking. So David Jones, who's in a great form at the moment, back to his best after the autumn series where he actually took over from Jonathan Thomas, who'll want to make a point as well. Lovely pass to Matthew Watkins, has men outside, but Havili dropped it. It was on, it was very much on, but they bombed it. It was a slip in midfield from the Ospreys' defence, gave Matthew Watkins a chance to go on the outside, but no from then on. Yeah, just watch, just watch the slip. There we go. Bogger, yeah, there he slipped. And that has got to be... A try. That is a poor basic error. Uh, the numbers were there, the overlap was on, but a simple dropped pass from Isaiah Havili cost the Scarlets the opening score. Engage. Oh, was that three quarters of a stone man advantage for the Scarlets? It's Dave Hewitt who's popped up on that side. It's the newest recruit from the Scarlets, former Canterbury and New Zealand tight head prop. Very interesting that the Ospreys have gone for Andrew Millward on their tight head. They may be looking to attack that side of the scrum. Well kept in by Garen Evans. Avili trying to make amends for the early slip. Plenty of time for Gavin Henson. Yeah. This will go down the channel now. Back in his own 22 is Garen Evans. So is Gareth Bowen. And safely on top of the seating on the far side. I was going to say temporary seating, but it's not by now. Just the covered seating. Backing on to the cricket field at the knoll. Well, that was a very good opportunity for Slash. You know, they played the decoy runners, and um, I think Sonny Park had just slipped there. But that, you've got to take those opportunities, you know. He's, you cannot drop those. Ball comes back somehow to Jason Spice, but it had gone forward previous, so it'll be a Scarlet scrum. And the Scarlets are attacking these early lineouts, particularly Dave Hodges, who's roaming between back and middle, trying to put pressure on the Osprey line out men well I think you know, the Slashy front five will you know try and stamp their authority on this game you know I don't think it's going to be that loose purely because you know of the the open side flanker situation they don't want Jonathan Mills getting exposed out wide because you know he isn't a, an out and out open side flanker so unless he's really on to go I think it'll be Celeste Fino on the, on the Slashy pack good scrummage from the Ospreys but well played by the Scarlet back row as well. They got out of jail that time. And Dwayne Peel gives it out to Bowen. Little chip for Fina who timed it well. Watkins is there as well, but Durston is the one who picks it straight into Fina who turns him in the tackle. Osprey help arrives and that releases it from Spice to Matthew Jones. Kicks against the grain, but back there was Gareth Bowen covering on the wing. Hodges in support. 
three Ospreys come across and Hodges showed his strength but Wyatt spilt it into the hands of Sonny Parker. I think Hodges is a very underrated player. I think he does a lot of hard work for Fussell and Essie. This is Hodges, goes in. He's a big lad, isn't he? Hodges goes to ground. There's a shoe in there, really, a little foot in by uh, Richard Pugh. He's 36 years old now, David Hodges, but he he may not get a feature in every game. He has to have a whiff, maybe, in between one or two of them. But when you think of the back row players out for the Scarlets, uh, Andy Powell is back on the bench again today. No Scott Connell, no Simon Easterby, no Gavin Thomas. Uh, so David Hodges, they really needed him with Jonathan Mills filling, it, filling in on the open side. And there is Simon Easterby. Nice. Elgin Reese's daughter on his right hand side. The more to see in Elgin sat in the stand. What was she supporting yeah, today? That'd be an interesting call, wouldn't it? Max, two yards, please. Two yards. Sticking with the years. She came That's down to the knoll as a neat goal. supporter and daughter of Elgin. And now yes, okay. is uh, the other half of Simon Easterby. Good foraging okay. by Dwayne Peel, but recovered by Ryan Jones. Matthew Jones Hinson was lying deep so he could do <laughs> just that it's a great kick oh. that's what he can do isn't it that's a great kick deep plenty of time takes you know takes the pressure off by standing deep no chase can get to him lovely kick go hold hold please Red. I think uh, you know oh. Gavin Henson now. You know he's he's playing in the number 12. A lot of players still think a lot of people still think he's number 10 in his position. But you know he's he's played so well this year. He's uh, he's not a complete footballer. Get on with it, say the crowd. I'd like to have my lines straight to the gap between them. Says Robin McBride. Up it is. <laughs> Just caught Richie Poo then as he was going back across. It wasn't the slippery feel that did it. That's definitely one for the crowd, that is, by putting pressure on uh, McBride. Nigel Whitehouse gives the free kick. Green oh. 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 is away and he hasn't even heard the whistle. Away. So that's a nice little 60 metre away. sprint for Dwayne Peel, all for nothing. His ref wants a word with Andrew Millward before play Stay can there, continue. Please. Wait, I'm dealing with it. Just make sure he's all right first. It's Jonathan Mills Delay who's uh, Delay in the lying prone. Enough cap away, please. And it is um, Andrew Millward. When the break was done by Peel, as you were just had called number three Net. come here. It'll be interesting to see. What the decision will be by Nigel Whitehouse. Foul play, Foul okay, play he said. So he knows sure who it play. is. He's That's a cut lip for Jonathan Mills. This is it. Let's see, keep the jersey. I... There's a swinging arm coming in from Andrew Millward. Are you okay, Ed? Yeah. It's been interesting to see what he does. What happened, what I saw, okay, you came straight into that. His head was there, it was that. Straight into his head, okay? Away. Oh, well, it's ten minutes for Andrew Millward to tell pull you over his indiscretion. I tell you what, you know, swinging arm. That's why I'm glad that we've got a Welsh referee today who understands the situation and the intensity of this game. If we'd have had a Scottish or Irish referee, that could well have been a red card, as Ryan Jones had in Munster. Watch him, he comes in from the side. Here he comes in now. Swinging arm, right over the top. Have a bit of that for Christmas. And he can sit there now. Ten minutes. I'm not going to use any uh, Christmas puns like Stuart did. I think he's still got the crack crackers in his pocket. He's, he's taking the jokes out of them, isn't he? Push out, push out. Come again. So, Osprey's down to 14 men. Oh. 
It's a good ball from Gareth Bowen, but it was well read by Gavin Henson. As Finau came on the straight ball, David Jones into Jonathan Thomas and through him as well. And a lovely little offload to Chris Wyatt that was very well played by David Jones, who then oh, wants to get that ball away from James Bater. And uh, oh, nothing is being held back there. The kick was too far, though, and easy for Durston. Here we are, use your mark. I use tell your mark. you what. Nothing at all is being held back. This is a real Boxing Day derby. Well, good, you know, if the guy's laying on the wrong side, you know, he should get a, a good ruck in. You know, he knows he can get away, and, and I think it was Ryan Jones who could, got a, who could have got away there. But a poor option by Gareth Bowen there, really, because he had numbers. He just got to put it on and just punch through the line. Kick was too far, very easy for Durson. I'm at the front. Defensively as well, I think the Ospreys, because maybe they know that they would target Marty Jones, they're going up very, very quickly, man for man. And then they push late. And Great that's what happens. Ball. Havili came from the blind side wing. Good tackle by Durston. Havili not quite sure when to release. It was a lovely move. Which brought in Havili behind the front line runners. Well defended though by the Ospreys, and they've slowed it down enough to get men back there. Here come the charge from the Scarlet forwards. They're keeping it tight. There's only one man out wide, and that's David Jones. So they have to keep it in that quarter. Spice gets in there. And the scrum is awarded for the Scarlet. So Ospreys will have to bring Adam Jones on now. Well, this is what happens. We need to defend man for man and then push late if the blind side winger is in you can't push two you see and that's the problem he's coming from the shoulder from the blind side and if you go up and push late it's very very difficult to pick your men up and the scarlet's almost worked the two on one out wide as well had Havili been able to get his pass in the scramble defense has been good you know they got back they got numbers in between the, the ball carrier and the supporting runner which didn't allow Havili to get the pass away. Sonny Parker. He's had his uh, fair share of injuries in his career. Now then, uh, who's the one? It's Richie Pugh who's gone off. He's had to make way for Adam Jones, who's coming on there temporarily. There's Adam Jones. With Barry Williams and Duncan Jones, with Andrew Millward in the bin. So Richie Pugh yeah. is the one who suffers. Wait, just hold. No, just crouch and hold. Engage. Good job. So they had a six stone advantage, even before Millward went off. Not so well worked that time. Hodges was too far back. Spice bringing him down. Bowen. Selly, and they're up very quickly in midfield. And Barry Williams just guarding the short side as well. Well presented ball by Palacelli. Far more defenders than they are attackers, though. And Matthew Watkins has to come back to the forwards yet again. Here we are. Osprey's not committing too many men in there. They're keeping the numbers out for the defence. Peel. Jonathan Mills. Still, you know, the defence is very organised. Not on doing to Disappointment, obvious from Peel, but the defence had the upper hand there. Hey, what you know is feet just oh, catches that foot. Whoop, yeah, pick it up. Okay. Well, actually, I think Wait, I've got to pick away. up no, no, and drive no. more because the, the Osprey's defence not committing many people to the, the rucks of Maud and they're spreading well, so there's you've got more defenders and attackers out wide. Leave it. Both slip together. That's a slip, thank you. Ball's not in. Stuart, back over to you. Yeah, the biggest thing to watch is Shane Williams on the blind side, protecting the feet of this ball here. He's going to see that round to Ryan Jones, the one man down. And Duncan Jones has been causing all sorts of problems with Dave Hewitt. The All Black up in the first scrum, back in the back. But will it be undermined by the one man down? Yes, yes, yes. And Shane is gritting and putting his 12 and a bit stone into that. And it's worked because they've got the ball. They can use in midfield through Matthew Jones. Tidy though. Turnover. Turnover as well. No, an opportunity. Oh. Matthew Watkins had uh, Finau and Havili on his outside, and it's turned out to be 
poor kick. <laughs> Which does the belts into the crowd is a good measure. Well, could that have gone dead? Could that ball have gone dead? See if this goes dead. If Durston would have just left this goal, let's have a look. It's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling. Mm. Oh, I'd, have, I'd have given it another little bounce, actually, and it a nice scrum back for the Ospreys. As it is, it's a 22-metre restart, and the Ospreys haven't conceded a point in the time they've been down to 14 men, and the Scarlets will want to change that before Millward and Pew come back on the field. I think they have been in control, but the defence has been very good by the Ospreys. And that's what they've been trying to do time and time again, is that little stab through, because the defence is up so well, and they've failed yet again. Parker had to take that behind him, but he did well to get away from Jonathan Mills. Again, turned over. Turn over once again. Well, I don't think neither coach would be happy. Clancy, Gareth Jenkins, coach won't be, he'd be happy with the dominance that they've had. But what they've done with the ball has been really nothing because you know they've been trying to chip through, do this little grubbers, little chips, and I don't think it's well, it's not, it's not working. There we are. Look, territory 60 per, uh, 67%. Like I was on his feet. Okay, okay. Yeah, and, ruck, you know, the, Lynn Jones kick. will not be happy with that because they would like some ball, like some possession. And now Gareth jump. Bowen has gone off yeah. with a cut eye, I think. Well, Stewart was mentioning earlier problems coming, in Steve? the scrums for the Scarlets, and I think we can have a look at them. Great lad, still a sub coming. Let's sub, watch us off. Well, there's a first scrum, he's got under him, and he's, and he's gone up. Second one, he's gone under him and he's going back. And it's Dave Hewitt finding life tough. Uh, it's an easy start for him, you know, against Borders. Yeah. Um, always thought it would be a little bit tougher at the, the Gnoll. The Scarlets' blood and placement wearing number 21 is Arwell Thomas. And uh, here's another young gentleman who's uh, spent a bit of time here at the Knoll, Arwell Thomas. Bowen rushed off, thinking to cut on the face, but uh, I think he wants to come back on as soon as he can. Wait, lad, for the ball, please. We did speak in the changing room. I don't want you fainting. Wait, so from an you. attacking scrum, Ospreys. Keep Shane Williams out on the wing. Ryan Jones with a pickup. Jones. It's well angled. It's a fine kick from the Ospreys outside half. Lovely kick. Takes it away from Aaron Evans. Now they've got to try and steal the line of possession. Five, I think with the Ospreys, you know, with the advantage that they have in the back row, you know, they've got to try and spread it a little bit. We haven't seen, you know, they've had limited possession, but just try and spread, you know, get Pew, which should Pew into the game a little bit. Quarter of the match done, not a point on the board yet. It's a very interesting tussle out there. Scarlets won't be happy with their error count. Chance to counter attack here. Early ball for Shane Williams. Back on the angle comes Durston. Spice to Matthew Jones. Oh. Goes for the cross kick instead of keeping the ball in hand. Uh, even though Havili isn't the safest underneath them, may have been a better option. Injury update from Stewart. Yeah, thanks so much, Gareth. I've had a little look at him. He's being looked at by the doctors at the moment as well. He's got a two-centimetre gash underneath his right eye. Uh, personally, he wouldn't stop me coming back on, but you know what outside halves are like? There's one sitting next to you. They're a little bit softer, so we, we may see him again. I don't know. Jonathan Thomas with a take. 
interesting lesson in the say now, just totally derogatory to us too, I thought. I say that. Oh, great run from Duncan Jones to Adam Jones. Within a couple of metres, Spice, Barry Williams, held up just about on the try line. Scarless get numbers there as well. Come away! Come away! Away! Phil John got Nothing. himself and his body on the line please. that time. Good, good defence, but look at this. There's the first, there's the inside ball. Just keep it running, ball will go down here, and from this next ruck, it's got to go wide. Barry Williams takes it on and he's held up. That had to go wide. And the good work in defence by Phil John in particular has won his side the scrum and a chance to relieve the pressure. But there's no relief from the pressure in that scrum for the Scarlets. Down here. And it's not okay, making life here, particularly please. easy for Dwayne Peel. Oh, it's a slip. Just a slip oh, that tight, and it is a bit mushy in the foot. Certainly no frozen bits, despite all the snow that was on the ground. It was well covered, and uh, Roy Evans and his team have done a great job. Here they go. Big cheer, because... The Ospreys are back to 14, and there was the Neath squad who helped the groundsman Roy Evans to get the ground in good working order and playable. Driving before! Here we are! And with Driving before! The full weight of the Ospreys there, the Scarlet's got the on. early shove on, and that's cost them. Scrum! And the option from Barry Williams Scrum is goal. down again for a scrum. Look out for Ryan Jones, I think. Well, let's see. Same Duncan here. Jones can do his work and get up on the left-hand side. No, wait, They've no, got to come no, left-hand no. side. Doesn't look that, uh, that they are because Shane Williams is loitering on the right-hand side. But if Duncan Jones gets up, yep, here they come. Back row's tied in. Picked up by Ryan Jones to spice Matthew Jones. David Jones away, have come across. Away. Good work by David Jones. Spice. Barry Williams burrowing down to squeeze the ball back, it's there, Spice, and a lot of men around him, advantage being played by the referee for the Ospreys, Henson has a go, he can't make it, still advantage being played, no it won't be because it's in scarlet hands, hands on the ground was the offence, now then will they go for another scrum or will they get the first three points of the afternoon? I'll go for the three points, we have not many opportunities, there's the, the ruck form, number one, Phil John Hans there. Got to go for the post, haven't they? Because they haven't had any territorial position and they haven't had, you know, a lot of ball. So to go in front after 26 minutes, go 3-0 up, they'll be happy with that. I mean Henson, leading point scorer in the Celtic League, the only man so far in three figures. Easy for Henson, he still gives it a rare old belt, lands on somebody's roof. I think it's landed in, I think it's landed in Tormer. <laughs> it's only ten metres out, but he hammered it. This, this is the opportunity, look. As Barry Williams takes them off, you look at there, look, there's one man outside, and there's one, two, three, four there. If that would have gone wide, that would have been a try. And that's why you've got to have an overriding call just to get any forwards out of the way. Behind. But the stats earlier showing that the possession and the territory favoured the Scarlets, yet it's the Ospreys who've got the first points of the afternoon. Get away! No, it's there, the ball's there! David Jones to his captain, Garen Evans. Thought about the angle kick for the corner. Richie Pugh was there waiting for him as he tried to go the long way round. Arwell Thomas, he goes for the corner. Durston 
picks up on the bounce. Knew there's a big gap there. Strain Peel has got to get across the cover. Good corner flagging by the scrum half. But good vision by Adrian Diston. He spotted where the gap was. Quite deliberate in putting it there. And Peel, like a good scrum half, corner flagging well. Again, you know, I, I don't think that's a good kick by the Scarlets. It's a lovely kick by Durston, and Peel does well to spot it. No option. And the other one back in defence there was the Scarlets, was Dave Hodges, but he was actually out of play because he wanted to leave the field, and he has gone off now to be replaced by Andy Powell. Barry Williams. Leave it right! Leave it right! Leave it right. Cobain. A scrum half to Ryan Jones, good burst from the number eight. Matthew Jones, Parker back on the inside track. Again, the temptation too great for the Scarlets. Give away the penalty and an extra ten metres for disputing the decision. Well, they showed good discipline, haven't they, the Ospreys, and it, well, no, they defended very very well in the first half an hour and they haven't given any penalties away in a kickable position so now slowly the Ospreys have come back into the game a good field position and Clenetley have given two penalties away and this should be 6-0 to the Ospreys and I think the best aspect of this game so far has been the Ospreys defence because Clenetley have had a lot of ball but they just cannot break the Ospreys defence down Gavin Henson has swapped his golden boots for some silver ones. And so far, I thought it was frost. <laughs> the effect, pretty much the same. <laughs> two from two for Gavin Henson. Ospreys to six points to nil. And Stuart Jones has been joined by the Ospreys. Stuart Davis has been. Joined by the Ospreys Regional Director of Rugby, that's Derwin Jones. Thank you, Gareth Davis. Um, Derwin, a bit of relief there, perhaps six points up, and uh, the possession and the territory so far have been going the Scarlet's way. Yeah, that's right, you know, but the, the important thing is when we do get the opportunities to be clinical, and, and so far we have been doing that, it's important now to get a bit more possession and, uh, and build the phases and show the confidence we have in the last sort of 10 minutes. You mentioned keeping possession there, the kicking game's been going astray, isn't it? Yeah, that's been quite right so far, but uh, you know, hopefully now we can have a bit of confidence and go six points up and, and, and keep on going. Well, unsurprisingly, the uh, Scarlet's coming straight back. Back to you, Gareth. Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, Arwell Thomas almost utilising a gap down the blind side there with Chris Wyatt. Arwell Thomas again, and Havili slipped as he tried to go for the gap outside Jonathan Thomas. The referee says no advantage. Knock on and scrum for Scarlet. Knock on. I'm happy there, it's flying away. Happy there. This is for my call at rest. Please stop. Possession like slowly creeping up the Ospreys. Ten, sub. Blood is back on. Territory again. Last ten minutes. In option 22. And that's a scarless, although with all the territorial and you know possession domination, they still have they still lack that cutting edge behind them. They apart from Matthew. Jay Watkins, you know, who has played really, really well. 12. I just think that we just are not yeah. cut in, you know, the defences as we've seen them in past seasons. And yeah, well, no matter how much possession or territorial advantage you, you have, you, you've got to use it. It is tough out there. We saw Dave Hodges in the changing room. Bob Lyshan having a look at him. Looked like his shoulder, probably. The AC joint is... He's trying to stretch his arm up to see how much flexibility he had, and then there's Jason Spice being strapped up as well. No holds bad, full-blooded league derby match out there. That'd be a big loss, to, uh, Hodges. You know, there's a lot of a lot of work, dirty work. Carries a ball. He's a very powerful, very powerful man. Bobby Jones now packing on the blind side, and that's Andy Powell, who's at eight. It's an opportunity for Andy Powell to, sh to show what he can do. Powell has a look, Jonathan Mills waiting to come round. Richie Pugh quick off the mark as well. Vernon Cooper takes it up. 
Now it's a front row's turn through Dave Hewitt. Back to the back row once again with the old tractor and trailer. The man knocking into a man in front of him. Protecting him coming through. Yeah, just protecting, protecting him. Protecting him as he's coming through, lads. Missed opportunity again for the Scarlets. Oh, I win as hell, boys, OK? With all the ball they are, I still think, I don't think they've had a go Let's at go. Uh, Matthew Jones. Spin up, spin you know, number out. 10 for the Osprey, they should just go down his channel. Ball's gone. Oh, dear me. The pressure, it was a great scrum for the Ospreys, but uh, it didn't work out between Spice and Henson, did it? Knock on, and the knock on from Henson will give Scarlett a great chance. Knock on. Yeah. That's uh, the pressure from the number Come nine. Away. Good, Henson takes his eye off the ball. That's just a mistake by Henson. He was seeing seeing the ball sailing 60 metres down the field there, but unfortunately just took his eye off it. Wait, please, no. Coach and this is an opportunity now for the Scarlets to reply. They want to get that scrum solid first, and they haven't done. Powell picks up. He's done well there. Yeah, very well, well indeed. And the pressure from Peter and Ryan Jones. And that should be a penalty, that. They've slowed it down. The, the you know, the defence now is organised. That should be a penalty, and this now should be advantage. He is doing exactly that now. Angel Whitehouse falling advantage. And again, the Ospreys slow it down. Looked illegal, and it's deliberate, and that's what the yellow card is for, that kind of offence. Away, please! Away! Away! It's against you! On the top! Away! Yeah, it should be a warning there. That's a professional foul. John and Thomas should warn him and say, look, any more of that and Why? you're off. Against you! Well, the yellow card is for that. Probably more so than foul play. It's that kind of professional, if you no, like. Back you go! Deliberate, you you, slowing down and preventing when they're near the try line. Certainly a general warning is merited. Half a yard, please, take him down. Take him down. 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 What? Down. Crowd, they'll travel up from west, try and lift the side, and David Jones takes the line out ball. McCoy's in control now. Looking to work it forward. No one. But it's well defended again by the Ospreys. Duncan Jones in there as well. Jonathan Milko is picked up and canters over. It was well defended initially by the Ospreys, but then well, well. all of a sudden it opened up for Jonathan Mills. They thought that they had control of it. Duncan Jones and Miller were quiet. Just watch it now. McBride is in total control. They go to the right, they drop it, but there's no defenders on the left hand side whatsoever. Look. The ball pops out for Jonathan Mills, and that's just a simple, simple try for him. Here we are, just watch it there. He hasn't even got his eyes on the ball, Mills. The ball will just pop. I don't know, he gets it. Well, I think everybody was caught unawares, including Jonathan Mills, the try scorer, whose delight was obvious as it was unexpected for him. Gareth Bowen with the conversion attempt. And that success means the Scarlets go ahead for the first time. Oh, just watch this now. I think the ball just, just comes off one of the players' knees then, straight into Jonathan Mills' hands. And he scores. I think he was as a surprise as anyone. Good take by Chris Wyatt, well supported by his two props. Gareth Bowen. There's a big space there, which nobody covers initially. Shane Williams gets away from Finau, gets away from Matthew Watkins, gets away from everybody into space. Richie Pew is screaming for it on the outside. Cobain. Millward, it's still on Duncan Jones as Jonathan Thomas on the outside. Back to Barry Williams. What a try! try. What, what a try. try! Barry Williams may have scored it, but it's the other Williams, Shane, who created it. Brilliant counter-attacking by the Ospreys. Well, 
Celeste will be kicking themselves, but that's a fantastic try. This is a loose kick. The bounce of the ball, disorganised defence, missed tackles. Once he missed a tackle, he's away. But what's the support on the forwards? There's Millwood. There's Duncan Jones. Ryan Jones. Oh, what a lovely ball. No, I think it's Jonathan Thomas. And then a lovely ball. Just watch his support play. Millwood, Duncan Jones. The filtering out wide, that's Jonathan Thomas, inside ball, Barry Williams. That is a superb try, all down to the missed tackle when they let Shane Williams get behind them. The bouncing ball. Well, that's Shane Williams at his devastating, dangerous best. and strike just fades at the death the Ospreys back in front and that support has been a feature of their play this season we saw them score tries like that out in Ulster we've seen them against several teams and that's a trademark of theirs and so is the Shane Williams counter how many times do you see you know when the ball bounces the defence checks it either goes away you know, from the, you know something usually happens but what happened was play on go back the defensive line was totally disorganised. A good play from the restart by David Jones. The penalty goes against Dwayne Peel. There's only one way this is going. And there we are, that's 40 minutes exactly up on the clock. So, a shot for nothing for Gavin Henson. Just watch this out. It's a, a loose kick and no one calls for it. Durston, Spice, and then Shane Williams. And just what? Fino thinks he can get to him and smash him. And look at that. Bang, bang. Three missed tackles. And once you're behind, that is the end of it. Lovely. See, and that's it. You know, in the forwards, he got behind the first defensive line. And all the Ostrich forwards were there to support him. strike that one anywhere near like you know he can I think on on this pitch is not great you know it's 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 okay for this time of year but it is damp underfoot and his standing foot just give way a little bit there wasn't sure and just pulled it a little bit so it's just stoppage time now to add on, James Bater ducks under the would be tackle of Andy Powell. Durston, good offload from Durston. Yeah, forward pass. Forward to Jonathan Thomas. Forward. See what they were trying to do. It's supposed to be a quick one to Durston to Jonathan Thomas four. and back. I think it's four minutes to go, me, That's what he said. Four minutes. There are a couple of injuries, no, aren't no, they? No, 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 please no. Just hold. And engage. Could you come up? Powell again finding it difficult. Oh, and dispossessed easily by Spice. Peter, very quick hands indeed. Forward on the knock on, boys. Well, it was a good effort Forward from James Peter. Forward pass first. But Jason Spice had ripped it away from Andy Powell Forward. effortlessly. Uh, it's an offload, but uh, Spice was in there. Steals the ball. Peter tries to get the quick offload. But Duncan Jones is giving Dave Hewitt a 2 0. Just hold, please. Just hold, coach, come up. Out. And again, Powell finds himself in all kinds of bother. Leave it black, Scott. From the scrum. Did well there, though, just get back on it. On the way, please, on the way, good. Good kick by Bowen. That is a very good kick indeed. Scarlet's needed now. And there's a little gash for Stewart. <laughs> Oh, for me, that, please. Does it does well, really? Oh, the spin doesn't he on the ground? Secure possession. Garen Evans did well as well, coming in and clearing men out the way. Cleared spice out the way. James Peter back down on his feet okay, so they can drive in on him. Push out. Push out. Still inching their way. 
still moving, so they can still keep it in there. And Barry Williams is the one who's controlling it all to Jason Spice. Tries to find the same gap that Barry Williams had got through. Duncan Jones has a look one way, then the other. Matthew Jones trying to spot some space behind Tyson. Rolls away in the winger, rolling it over the touchline, but it just wouldn't go, and he had to carry it over. Oh, yeah. That would mean more pressure on the Scarlets. Just had to pick it up, didn't yeah. he? Shane Williams breathing down his neck. Drop, send him up to me, please. That's four minutes of stoppage time gone. It's still a couple to come. Yeah. Snethy, Scarlets won't want to concede any more points now. The Ospreys will want to get something just before half time. Thomas to Duncan Jones. He's put in a lot of work in this first half. In all aspects of play. Barry Williams again leading, taking on that first time ball. And Duncan Jones back in there again. He's, he's got into his legs. Well, I didn't see that then, got there, did he? Who did he drive into ah, there? Got into somebody's got legs, legs, Nigel White, I said. I just drove into that. Um, no, no, Crouching hold. Engage. Look out for the shove coming on from the Ospreys again. Get hold, please, turn now, what a pressure come on to from us. Duncan Jones in the front okay, row once second, again. Please. You can see Gareth Bowen in the back with his hand over his eyes. Look, it's difficult with the sun. No, no. Across, a low sun. Across. There he is. Doesn't help with the stitches in his right cheek and a puffy cheek, but which Stewart says is nothing. Go, oh, let's together. <laughs> I'm happy, it's gone together, slip. I ain't gonna get, I'm not gonna guess it, boys. I'm not gonna guess, okay? It's very hard to pick the ball up with the sun being so low. Yeah, with the pressure nice as well, you know, I'm coming from the, the Neath Ospreys pack. That's, uh, that's okay. what he's got. Yeah. Just give yourselves a bit of room, please. At six o'clock. Crouch and hold. Engage. Coach, come on, put him in. Peter's not parking, is he there? Well, oh, he's done well there, yeah. Powell oh, again. Because it went down on oh, Dave Hewitt's side. But the penalty has gone against the Scarlets for getting hands in there. Hunt! No, we haven't got time. He's got no, to go for goal. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, I should be a line out, sorry. Yes, OK, that's fine. No, no time for that. <laughs> Barry Williams, good captain, see, making absolutely sure that the message was clear. <laughs> Nigel White said there was time for a kick, but Barry Williams sorry, making sure he, there wasn't time for a kick for touching a line out. There yeah. wasn't, so no. he'll go for goal. And interestingly, Matthew Jones is going to have a shot. Yeah. That's quite an interesting decision, is why is um, Matthew Jones taking the kick? This would be uh, a little bonus for the Ospreys. Well, he's got 41 points this season in the league during the time that Gavin Henson has been away on international duty. Kicked well against the Dragons that evening in Rodney Parade. He's pushed it as well. Yeah. That would have been the final kick of the oh, first that, half. What are they doing behind the... Almost giving the Sevealia a free gift then, but it wasn't to be in the end. And that kick from Matthew Jones rounding off a very, very interesting first half play. Yeah, well, I just think, you know, it's been... Uh, the first half has been the first, but the first 20 minutes and the second 20 minutes, you know, Clethy were totally done in the first 20 minutes. And the defence and the discipline of the Ospreys were superb. They went up the other side, took the chances, and that's been it, really. You know, they totally dominated the last 20 with uh, you know, two excellent tries by both regions, but uh, still everything to play for. And there's Stewart just uh, in shot there. As tough as you'd expect in a Boxing Day local derby, but some good rugby as well. And at half time, with plenty more to come, hopefully, it's Ospreys 11, Scarlet 7. A long, slow fuse was lit. Penalties only for the opening quarter and then deep into the second quarter. And then suddenly it all came to life. Jonathan Mills with the first try of the game. 
And if that was from short range, this was from longer range. All started by Shane Williams. And just look at the support from the Ospreys forwards and the handling skills of the front five. Barry Williams finishes it all off. 11-7 at half-time. It could have been worse for the Scarlets. Yeah, so look at the stats. It was a tale of uh, two 20-minute periods there, wasn't it? Possession. Osprey's 44%, and I think that was even lower after 20 minutes, so they clawed their way back into it. Pretty even in the opposition 22, but the Scarlets, look, they've given eight penalties away there, and I think most of those have come from the scrum because they've been under huge pressure there. And it's been a lot of ball turned over there as well. Been some mistakes, but it's been compulsive view, and I think it's been a fantastic game so far. OK, there are the match stats. We're looking on from the commentary box here. What do the coaching staff think of it all? Sean Holly is with Stuart. Yes, indeed he is. Thanks very much, Eddie. Well, Sean, I have to start with a Barry Williams try. That, that must be something that brings a huge smile to any any member of the coaching staff. Uh, we were both jumping up and down in the stands too. Yeah, no, uh, props to the highlight of the half. Uh, quite a tight affair, but uh, Shane did really well to break through the line. And I think we showed a lot of composure there. You know, the boys from the forwards put it through the hands and uh, well finished off by Barry. Pleased. It's a tight old game. It was a half that, that came to life in the, in the last 10 minutes, really. And uh, he conceded a very soft try, so, so uh, I should imagine very happy with the way he struck back after that. No, we're really disappointed with the try, really. You know, we feel quite confident there in our defensive line But uh, it's, it's a pretty tight affair, uh, difficult to referee, you know, lots of problems at the tackle area. And that's one area we really need to address now in the second half. Certainly your defence and discipline was a highlight of the first half. But I think you've just showed there that ball in hand is, is the way forward, perhaps, the second half now. Yeah, I think so. We can just, you know, turn the possession corner, get a few more um, points on the board. You know, Gav's missed a couple there. Then, uh, you know, we can go on and win this game comfortably. But, uh, you know, fair bit of Clenetti, they're dogging it out at the moment and making it difficult. Yeah, great game first half. Look forward to the second one. Thanks, Sean. Back to you, Ed. Sean Holly with Stewart dogging it out. The Scarlets, uh, they, they could have scored in the opening period. Yeah, they bombed a very early chance, and I think we'll see that later. But, uh, you know, the, the try they did score, I think there was more than a slice of luck yeah, about yeah. it. John and Mills just found themselves with it. You know, the ball popped out of the side of the ruck. They've been unable to break down. Like John mentioned, a very good Osprey's defence. We can see they've set it up here. Going backwards. They're going backwards, yeah, absolutely. Which they've been doing that quite a bit in the scrum as well. And it just pops out into John and Mills' hands. You know, he's just. He's seagulling on the outside there, and uh, Thierry Henry, if you're watching, this is how to celebrate. Do you see him <laughs> giving it the good head? So he was uh, delighted, and then the Ospreys obviously came straight back with probably a try of the season for me so far. It was, it was absolutely it? fantastic. Yeah. And I think we've seen two sides to Shane Williams for me in this half. This is where he is devastating. Loose kick, nobody picks it up. Now, from here on, this is what he loves. You know, he's stepping, he's beating players on a difficult surface. He gets behind him, and to be fair, I think he runs back to his forwards. But from here, Cobain, lovely little take and swivel. Millwood, the front row of the Osprey has been outstanding and Duncan Jones has been the best of the lot. Great inside ball from John and Thomas and try for the captain. That was really top draw, top draw play. You, you mentioned Duncan Jones in the loose there. He's having a great game. He is giving Dave Hewitt He's a going over. stuffing him. Absolutely stuffing him. And I think, Ed, obviously, we both know you can't play rugby. You can't expect to win a rugby game if you haven't got a scrum. And at the moment, the Scarlets just, they're getting absolutely hammered in that area. And, you know, they can't launch anything with their back row. They can't get peel running because that scrum is in retreat all the time. And that's down to Duncan Jones. Which rather confirms the point of Mike Cuddy of the, on the Osprey side, who, who criticised the Scarlets for buying in from New Zealand. A homegrown one's better than one from overseas, Ed. It seems like that at the moment, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we can have a chance to look at some of the scrimmages that have gone a, a bit awry for the Scarlets. Here and we go. You've been shouting penalty to the Ospreys, haven't you? Tell me what's going on here. Well, there's Dave Hewitt going up. Yes, you don't see pe people going up being penalised that much, but there they are. So the referee lets that one go because the Ospreys have got such an advantage. And this is the last one. Now, that for me is a collapsed scrummage. And Nigel White has let that one go. So that's penalty Ospreys? Oh, it's a penalty Ospreys. Because people... he's, he slipped his binding. Well, he gave the next penalty for hands in the ruck. Mm. But Hewitt under pressure turned in to collapse yeah. the scrum, which, yeah. is, which is more dangerous. The Ospreys were in a better position. You've got to stop it. You know, it's a dangerous you bring situation. bring John Davis off the bench? Play yeah. Hewitt? Yeah, I think that's uh, what, you know, uh, yeah. I think that's what they should do half-time, because, uh, you know, if they don't do something about that scrum, there's no way they can win this game. Absolutely. Well done, Mike. Well yes, analysed. Thank you. Thank that's you. Yeah, we like scrums. <laughs> Now then, out through the backs, Tal Sally's Tal Well, yeah, I defense. thought Tal Sally, I, th I think it was half excellent defence, but I think this is where Shane Williams is not top, the, top draw international winger. The other side winger. of Shane. The other sh because here, 
You've just got to say, international winger against Tal Selly as a centre, one on one, with that much space to work, you've got to expect him to. I, I he checked it, didn't he? He did, he did he the did first thing, him. he stopped him, and then he went for the outside. Now, you and know, I think if that's a howlet, or remember Yayan M's doing it, yeah. Nigel Walker, if they get those positions, they score. But then we saw the other side of Shane Williams, where how devastating he is counter attacking, and that's probably why he's, he's in the Welsh team. Okay, on the other wing. I say a Havili, oh dear, does he want to see this again? Well, I think if you're kind, you say he's cold. Sonny Parker slips there in midfield, which gives Matthew Watkins the chance to put Havili away. If you're kind, you say he's cold, it's his first touch of the ball. If you're cruel, you say that's a shocker, he really should have scored. This is where they've gone up in midfield, and John was making... You can see the Osprey centres are piling up in midfield here. It's a late run off the blindside wing, which cuts him. Now, if he'd had somebody on his shoulder there, they may have scored. You were saying that sort of half blitz and then, it's and a, then a change of mind. Because what happens is, when you rush up in defence there, man on man, then once the ball goes behind you, it's too late to change your angle. The ball's already gone. You pass the gain line, and that's the point John was making it. You know, you can't, you can't have half and half. You either have to be committed to that rush defence and have people covering behind, or you go up a bit slower and steadier and then you sh shift it cross so the Scarlets were dropping the ball or not taking full advantage of their breaks they were struggling at the scrimmage yeah and then they had a last chance because they were playing against 14 men for a time yeah I, there's, there's two issues here isn't there I think you know it, it certainly was a uh, it was a yellow card offense you can see him come in with a swinging arm there but for me Dwayne Peel taps it now and he's gone now why did why didn't he let this go well because I think he's blown his whistle and sort of said number three I want a word why not do it after oh, wait why not do it after? You know, I uh -huh. just think that we're looking for open, fast game. You let Dwayne Peel go, and you call Millwood right back after and give him the yellow card. But you don't stop the game for it. I think we could have seen a fantastic drive from Dwayne Peel there. Very unlucky. OK, Scarlet's under the cosh. Here's there Anthony Buchanan with Stuart. Yeah, thanks very much, Eddie. Well, Anthony, uh, a lot to be pleased with in that first half. Lots of territory, lots of possession. We're not sure, though, whether you're finding the cutting edge that you're going to need to win this game. Yeah, we had opportunities earlier on. I think the Sun has played a big part in the way we've played. Uh, we know that if we give them half a chance, what they can do, and they showed that. Uh, we had half a chance, we dropped it. I think second half, you know, we realised that we've got to win this game up front a bit, you know, and we've taken a little bit of a batter in at the moment, but uh, there's a lot of guys in there that want to come out second half and sort of prove a few points, and uh, I'm sure we'll see a, a stronger, tougher uh, eight second yeah. half. When the big boys win the ball, or we like to see it used wisely, there's been a bit of stray kicking as well, isn't there, behind? Yeah, well, they're dropping their wingers back, in fairness, and, and you know, we've got to tactically be more aware of that. But in fairness, I think the Sun, uh, believe it or not, was right into the eyes. They couldn't really look at, look up, pick their heads up and look what was going on. So some of that will sort of, hopefully, you know, second half, we'll see a bit more tactical awareness of where players are. Now then, one thing the sun doesn't affect is the <laughs> scrummage, and Anthony, you're a good man to ask about that. You knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, Mr. Yeah. Hewitt, he's yeah. struggling a little yeah. bit, isn't he? Yeah, I, I did mention what Duncan would, would be like, and, you know, Duncan is, is without doubt a, a top-class loose head. Yeah, he's, he's getting in there, and he's causing him a few problems, but uh, he's, uh, he'll, he'll stick in there. He's plenty about the guy. Uh, you know, we've had a chat now about it, and, you know, the front row realised they've got to step it up. Uh, the Ospreys are where they are, at the top of the league, because they've got a good front five, and... Uh, we know what about, that's where we've got to take them on. Yeah, sounds like there's more to come. Thanks for joining us, Anthony. Thanks, Oz. Back to you, Ed. Cheers, Stu. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, it, it's, I, I, just, I think it's great, isn't it? Because there is, a, there is a, an issue up front, and yet it's still a good game out wide. It has a bit of everything. Yeah, it does, and I think uh, everybody must be really looking forward. Great atmosphere, you know, and the second half now. Uh, the Scarlets, is, you know, they're still in it. They're very much still in it, but they've yeah. got to sort of us. seven only. Jonathan, a quick word from you. Want to say something to Mike? Not really, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think you've covered it all. I think, yeah, it's just, uh, I just think with the ball that they have, and as, as you've mentioned, the scrum is a problem, but they, they do lack that cutting edge, um, and I think you've covered it. They've, they've got to come down the 10 12 channel, get behind them first before they spread it, because they are spreading a lot of slow ball, and the Osprey's defence are totally dominating. So, Jeff, be with you in just a second, Mike, just finally. Um... Yeah, well, I think the Scarlet's going to hold on to the ball more. They've been kicking it away too much, especially looking for these little dinks over the top. That's not going to work for them. The Osprey's just got to keep playing the way they are, because uh, if they do, they're going to win this easily. OK, blackout. Back to you, Gareth and Jonathan. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, it, uh, yeah I think it's all to play for, and... Um... It's going to be an interesting second half, and if, if it'd be interesting to see who did win the toss, because you know the, the sun has now dropped, and they're playing against a slight wind. It's got it. So um, before we start, I'd like to say best wishes to everyone at Belinda Hospital, especially Graham Reese. So stick on in there and uh, enjoy the second half. 
first half was tough, was uncompromising, but very entertaining. Let's hope that the second carries on in the same vein. Two knock on. Not the start the Scarlets would have wanted. We don't know this. Wait, no, no, no. Dalzelli no. is in no, the game, no. very little really. That shows that the Scarlets haven't been able to get a width on it. They may have wanted. Ryan Jones with a pickup. Spice. Beta. Nobody out on the blind side. And now Henson is going in that direction. So is Adrian Durston. And that's the way Spice is going as well. Chipu recovering well for the Ospreys. They just lost it for a second. Barry Williams in the thick of things as usual. It's a scarlet try line in the background. Matthew Jones, Henson. Matthew Watkins had rushed up on the outside. Finau was waiting with a bear hug. Henson kept it alive though. Thomas trying to time his run. That's Jonathan Thomas. Spice, change of direction. Oh, lovely step from Shane Williams. Position, but as Mike said in studio, one against one, broken field is so dangerous. Just watch it inside, and Garen Evans has got no chance there. Just watch the step. Gareth Bowen goes too quick, and that's just steps on the gas. Lovely try. Just watch the inside defence. Andy Powell, I think it was. It's a great step, but you've got to make those tackles. You can't miss those tackles. Well, he's enjoying himself this afternoon, Shane Williams. Henson pushes it wide, just outside the right-hand stick, and that's uncharacteristic. I don't know why. Just watch the... Lovely gas, lovely step. That is a massive blow to the Scarlets. You know, they was they should take the kick. They've knocked it on, put themselves under pressure, and they've been punished. And because of you know, the lack of cutting edge behind, I think that is a big deficit to try and pull back. It's two scores. Jones really putting boot to ball that time. That's some kick. That one was straight out of Gavin Henson's book. I can understand though why they're swapping over in the goal kicking. But watch this strike. All in the timing. That is 50 meters, isn't it? The confidence is flowing for the Ospreys at the moment. Dwayne Peel trying to inject some pace and urgency into the Scarlets game, which they black, definitely black, need by now. Bride. Leave it black, leave it black. Good. Peel to Gareth Bowen. Garen Evans as well a timed run. He well to cope with a very hard thrown pass. And again, you know. Just a little bit of doubt in a defensive... Uh, <laughs> big hit by Duncan Jones on Phil John. I think there's a bit of history there, isn't there? Just a bit. Just a little bit of history, yeah. yeah. Oh, Nigel White has got in the way of Duncan of uh, Dwayne Peel then. Again, there's a better shape on the Osprey defence than there is on the Scarlet attack. Waiting out wide. Here we are! Five blocks! Wayne Peel wants to get on with things. Five blocks! Jonathan Thomas is the one who is offside that time. Offside! Yeah, they need a good kick, North Gareth Bowen. Number five! Uh, got away with it. Not the best strike uh, Gareth uh, made today. Right across. 
Scarlett's need to strike back as the sun disappears as a thin strip of it in the eyes of the Osprey forwards as they line up for this one. No, we don't care. It's a red ball. Andy Powell wasn't expecting that one. Phil John straight at Matthew Jones, but James Bater took the pressure off his outside half. Mills. And they got it, they got Barry Williams and Andrew Millward in the defensive line on the right hand side. They've got to get the ball to Matthew G. Watkins to take Andrew Millward on. Matthew Jones trying to set it up. They go the opposite direction, and that's where the Neath defenders are waiting. Barry Williams tries to get a faster man outside, and now he stepped in when he realised the danger was there. Osprey's oh, defence got it, not the Neath. Thank you, Jonathan. It's the first one that slipped in. This is what the Scarlets have got to do, I think, just pick and drive, pick and drive, suck defenders in. Unfortunately, they've lost the ball, the turnover. Thurston has to give Shane Williams a run on the far side. And they've got to come left-hand side, I think, the Scarlets. Matthew Watkins, and man and ball. Still pass. got numbers, still got numbers. Powell back uh, to the heart of his forwards, but also to the heart of the Osprey ones. Peel spots a gap. Pops it up for Wyatt. Suspicion of forward. No, it was forward, I think. <laughs> Not suspicion. <laughs> but Lost the Ospreys it turn it over. Parker, Henson, Sonny Ali. Oh, lovely pass to Sonny Parker. Parker shows his strength. Great support for Matthew Jones and Durston. One more would have done it. But Durston couldn't get the pass in. And now it's the Scarlet's turn. Been hit by Matthew Jones on his opposite number, and that And as the hands go in, the penalty goes against the Scarlets. But exciting stuff again, principally from the Ospreys. Good hit, good play, first of all. Seviali, lovely ball. Parker with uh, Havili on his backside. Ball comes loose here. Bowen picks it up. Matthew Jones gets under him and just dumps him as well. That's the penalty. Well, everybody's getting stuck in. Well, that was an opportunity for the Scarlet. They had numbered on the left-hand side. Just didn't spot it early enough. And now they're under the cosh once again. Big crowd, big atmosphere. Big hits going in. Everybody rising to the occasion. Bater rising higher than anybody. Back down to Andy Millward. Drags Dave Hewitt along with him for the ride. In go the Ospreys forward. Jonathan Thomas and Barry Williams. He's got it. Just short. But the try has come anyway to James Bater. Great work by the Osprey forwards. It was Bater who won the initial line-out ball. And he's the one who gets on the end of it for try number three. The difference has been the clinical finishing of the Ospreys. They had to drop this as a one-on-one -on -one tackle. He would have had to put it to the ground. Didn't. Barry Williams nearly sneaks over. There's no defence. They can't stop that. Beat the scores. Well, with half an hour left, is that the end of the Scarlets? They've got to really be more clinical, you know, they just no cutting edge whatsoever behind. No authority, nobody's dominant in the game, you know, from 10 or 12. They've got to just control the whole game. Stay. Kick no it, chance. swapped again. No. Back to Matthew Jones, but he puts it exactly the same place that Gavin Henson put his. That's the one aspect that has let them down this afternoon, no is the goal kicking. Like, Otherwise, the Ospreys very much on song. Just very clinical, aren't they? Very, very clinical. They've had a couple of opportunities and they've scored. But the only one they've missed is when Barry Williams took the ball in, I feel. Except they've had more opportunities. That's a blow for them, he's off. Let's just hope it's not a serious injury again. Matthew Reese comes on for the final half hour plus. Well away from it. Well away from it.
been given to the Scarlets. I think actually Jason Spice got a hoof in, which got a ricochet, which would have given the Ospreys a throw. Good take by David Jones, but uncomfortable for Dwayne Peel in the end. Matthew Reese with the cleaning up work, but again the Scarlets going backwards. Peel to Gareth Bowen. Oof. Matthew Jones. Gareth Bowen felt it was late to the tackle. Well, look, him again. look at the different numbers in defence. You just put his point to this giving the ball out. You've got to pick and drive first of all. Suck defenders in because there's they've got so many defenders there. Cooper, Havili, held up by Parker and Henson, just on halfway. Peel, well, they're swarming around Dwayne Peel. They can't get the ball away. Cobain on his feet, get hands on it, and it's back to the Ospreys. Loose pass for once. Matthew Jones tries to recover and does, keeps it alive, but Gareth Cohen is back there. <laughs> it's all over the place. And it's such fast thinking by the two teams. They're doing their best to keep it alive. And even though there are mistakes, you can forgive them for trying. Yep. Time off, so what happens here, really? There's the turnover. Copain does extremely well, gets over. Ball comes back. There you go. And as they regather, and as Chris Wyatt gets a bit of attention, we can go back down pitch side to Stuart Davis. Yeah, things are very, going very well for the Scarlets, Gareth, but the, the one thing they will be happy with is that at least the injury to Robin McBride isn't a recurrence, it's a fresh injury, he's holding his shoulder, he described it as a bit of a stinger, not very comfortable with it, but at least it's not, uh, it's not the injury that's been keeping him out all this time. Thanks, Stu, that is good news. Wayne Proctor. Fitness coach for the Scarlets just having a word there with Robin McBride who wants to try and get back in contention for the Six Nations come the beginning of February. Harry Jones scrambled it clear from the scrum. And, and again, that is a nothing kick. A nothing kick because they had a scrum in an attacking position, it went wide. No, I think he's in a good vein of form at the moment, Matthew Jones. He's got to take people on. But it seems to me that they've... Then, you know, I don't think they think uh, they can break this defence down. I just don't think they can. No, oh, it's only a bit of blood. Sponge it down and let's get on with it. Yeah, more of that vase up your snout and then you'll just get on with it. <laughs> Stuart must have something else to say about that. No, another option half bleeding. Stuart's eaten bigger than him, I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh, okay. Tough on Dave Hodges. Scarlet's lost him on. early on. Wait. And he's struggling with that shoulder by the look of him. Push out, push out. Come back. On against the throw. Peel, Gareth Bowen. They're all going backwards, taking the ball. Finau tries to use his considerable bulk. Henson stuck with him all the way, and it's a free ball that anybody can go for. Well, it was, not anymore. Peel. Cobain up very quickly away, on Jonathan away. Mills. Ball gone, ball gone, come away. Watkins looking for width to David Jones, trying to bring Selly back in on the outside. Great tackle by Gavin Henson. Well, he read that really well, didn't he? This Ospreys team, this Ospreys defence, is very, very fired up. Well, that's it. You know, he read that very, very quickly, and he was an easy tackle for, for Gavin Henson. Just watch it. Tarselli comes early, drifts off his man. He's a very, very strong, strong young man is Henson. Just got under Selly and smashed him. Enjoyed, enjoyed that. that one. It's interesting the fact that they have swapped over the kick. There's, that hasn't seemed to have affected um, Gavin Henson's yeah. confidence at all. And this ball's turned over, you know, not much in it. I think the, the Scarlets have done it in critical situations, haven't they? And he won't be happy, will he? Uh, it's been a tough old season for Simon Easterby. Yeah. He's lost a lot of rugby. Yeah, we... 
he'd like to have been out there as well. He's has a big influence on this uh, yeah, Scarlet side. So. His work rate is phenomenal. Again, beat there was the line out target. No, you come straight across him. Taking him out. Straight across him. People running in front of the ball carriers, taking, taking away out. defenders. He had a stop for that. They create the opportunity. Just watch it. Ball goes to the back. Watch for the dummy runner. Number seven. He's coming into play. Bang. You stay as you are. Don't worry about number. I don't think that's uh, obstruction. I don't think it is. It doesn't take any defender out. Spice gets it away well under pressure. Matthew Jones to Sonny Parker. Seven Ali. And all the creative work is coming from the Ospreys. Looking to get it away, but it was out of play. <laughs> I know. Scarlet's good recent run of form. Three wins from four in the Celtic League and the Cup in Europe. Push out, push away, Black, leave it! The Ospreys look to stay on top of the Celtic League. Savali takes and gets away from Avili. Made it available as well. Good support from Barry Williams, James Baker. Ball was out and Hewitt, one New Zealander, dumps another, Jason Spice. Barry yeah. Williams there yeah, again. Out. Duncan Jones to Savali. They're running much better angles, the Ospreys. They're asking far, far tougher questions of the opposition defence. Leave it, right, leave it! Up it is. Get away! Away! Get Wayne away! Peel was trying to get clear. Feet were on him, and Vernon get Cooper away. went in to defend his scrum half. Away! Away! I see that! They had a few stamps at him. He was trying to roll away, Dwayne Peel. Away! He's on the ground, he reacted, didn't he? I saw the ruck, I was happy with the ruck. Okay, okay the scrum ass legs were there, yeah. all they were trying to do was ruck him away from it. Okay. Then two of the Scarlet boys came yeah. in, Number four, four, and, four, four and five, four that's maybe. what I've seen. Yeah. I'm going to give the penalty to Black, okay? I'm happy with the ruck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Dwayne Peel would quite yes, agree with that. that. That's Nigel Whitehouse is happy that's with the rucking, okay. Dwayne Peel. Four and five. Rare old shoe in there. He was trying to free himself. It. And there's a two second rose listen who went in to help the scrum half. Listen to me. Come here, please. Come here. The scrum half was there. Skip it, okay. I was quite happy with that. His legs were doing. All he was trying to do was free his legs from the ball. Then these two come in. I'm happy. I'm happy to say it's a penalty against these two here. Well, if Twain Peel finishes this game, I'll be very, very surprised. Stuart, down to you. Yeah, I'm right behind the referee on that one. I think if you watch it again, I only saw it live, but Spice gives him a few taps. He lets him know he's bothering him. He doesn't take he doesn't take the warning and he's game on then. He should have got out of the way. And it's good to see a referee understanding that we just want some clean ball. Yeah, I, I agree with Stuart. You know, I think Peel could have moved his legs there, but I'm happy with Leslie as well. If you're getting your key play again stamped on you've got to go and look yeah, after him so I think you know referee got it right let's get on with it now it's a man's game absolutely Barry Williams sets it up again for Spice just wanted to catch the Scarlet defence drifting it's warming up now as well warming up a little bit They're approaching the final 20 into the last quarter Three tries to one with the Ospreys. They're hunting a bonus point as it stands. Yeah, and they've plenty of the ones who've got to chase this game now. They've got to do something. Over the top from Williams to Duncan Jones. Duncan Jones still going backwards even. Seve Ali steps in there. Andy Powell trying to get the ball off him, but he won't let go. It's been a loose foot now there. Have... Oppert 
Oh, the Scarlet and the chance of a breakaway. Away. Nigel Whitehouse keeping a close Away. eye on things. Oh, he Watkins has seen something as well. I didn't see anything at all. Rock situation here. Yeah. Nowhere near the ball. Right. Five come in and trampled recklessly right. on the okay. player. Nowhere near the ball. Right. Recklessly on recklessly the player, nowhere near the, the ball. Nowhere near the ball. Haven't seen the incident. Recommendation, please. A yellow card. Yellow card. Okay. Number five. Number five. Number five. What about that? Reckless? Five. Away, please, the battle view it. Five. Well, it's Hugh Watkins who spotted Chris Wyatt recklessly tramping, nowhere near the ball. The words used. That's why the yellow card has been produced. Oh, I'm happy. One, one way of uh, cooling the game down with my yellow card. Chris Wyatt is looking forward to see that 10 minutes end to come back on. Reckless stamping of a player no near the ground, no near the ball. Well, it's well, it is a real full-blooded encounter. Very enjoyable indeed. Very physical out there. Nothing signal. There he is, the culprit. Let's see, there's that's one, good, that's good there. two, three. Yep, because the ball's in Spicer's hand. Now there's nowhere there. near the ball. Chris, unlucky, you're off, sir. Hey. And now they've gone for the kill, aren't they? It's just it. It's an opportunity to finish the game off and get a bonus point. Pressure really on the Scarlets now. A man short. Osprey's driving towards the line. Control yeah, yeah. is all they need. Jason Spice yeah, held yeah, up by yeah. Fino are, on yeah. the try line. It's still there though. Yeah, Richie yeah. Pugh looking to release it. He gets it away to Shane Williams. Shane Williams is over for a bonus point try. A second for him, a fourth for the Ospreys. And it has been a happy Christmas for the Ospreys. Well, that's what he's got to do for Wales. He's got to come looking for, for work. Look what he is, he's in the outside half position. Whoop, thank you very much. Havili misses the tackle. Deceptively strong Shane Williams. He's worked a lot on his power. Steps out of the tackle, sucks and uh, try. And he is happy. Darren Evans is laying a lot down to respectability now, boys. Local derby. 20 minutes left. Chris Wyatt has paid. The highest price now, isn't he? Seven points. Simple conversion for Matthew Jones that time. And the Scarlets pay the price, and Chris Wyatt left to rue his rash footwork. But Stugaga, Paul Moriarty won't be there. Won't be happy. Neither will Nigel Gareth Jenkins. Began for Andrew Millward, who's gone off to be replaced by Adam Jones. And let's see if the Scarlets can find some of that pride that Garen Evans was asking for after that try. Knocked oh, out an opportunity for a counter. Durston got his kick in, but it's too near. Garen Evans looks downfield. Needs support, gets it from Vernon Cooper, then David Jones. Peel to Gareth Bowen. Selly, Havili. But they're going nowhere. And the foot in the way. Now then, which colour foot was that? If it was on his own men, and that was very, very poor. Yeah, foot, foot comes through, look, sometimes, you know, I think, uh, I was very unlucky with Scarlett, I think that role, you know, if he didn't play at it, maybe the line should go to uh, the Scarlett, you know, maybe bring the ruling in that if you don't play at it and it hits you, it should be all line out, you know, something with the IRB to think about, maybe. Matthew Jones, great Love pass to ball. Richie Pugh. Spice, Adam Jones, Ryan Jones, all oh, the Ospreys want ball in hand now. 
There's only one side, there's only one side in this game. Play on, play on. Good hands from Jonathan Thomas, Duncan Jones. He's been immense this afternoon. Leave it, Brad, good. Matthew Jones. <laughs> That's interesting. To say the least. Well, the way it's going, and oh. oh, Shane Williams latches onto it. Garen Evans diving to save his team. And David Jones has got back the support. It almost broke from the Ospreys then. And a rather strange kick. Matthew Jones willing to try everything. I'm not sure. What, was that an up and under can cross kick or I'm not really sure. Not happening one, Terry Jenkins. Uh, worrying times for him. Because they've been played off the park this afternoon. And James Peter has had a good game as well. Ensign. Spice gets an unexpected source of possession, but it had gone forward to him. Stu, back down to you. Yeah, thanks, Gareth. I'm alongside Mike Curry, Joint Chief Executive here at the, uh, the Ospreys. Looks like you're going to get what you ordered for Christmas, Mike. Yeah, it's very pleasing. Good crowd, good atmosphere. You know, very pleasing result and a lovely day. It's the man of the man of the victory that's pending. Must it must be what's pleasing you as much as anything. Or oh, some spectacular rugby. Yeah, it was very tight for the first 30 minutes, but uh, I think uh, we've taken control, and uh, you know we've got the bonus points, so we're happy. In the days of old, old you used to like turning the screw in the all I should imagine you're looking forward to more of the same, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple of couple of more tries uh, would be nice, but uh, we, we're happy. We're happy with the score at the moment. I'm sure you are. Thanks for talking to us, mate. Thanks, Stu. Big hand from Matthew Jones as he left. Gavin Henson has now gone to 10. David Bishop partnering Sonny Parker in the centre. And again, problems for that scarlet scrum. David Jones has fared better at 8 than Andrew Powell has. But they're still finding it difficult getting it away from those kind of positions. It means in a sea territory. Look at that now, 55% for the Ospreys. I mean, just to see how many times they got into the opposite in 22. They got 12 to 6. It was such a swing in the first half. Okay, don't come away from the scrum. Well, can they sense blood? Jonathan Thomas holds it up for James Baker to drive in. But they've now gone to ground. Penalty as well, collapsing it. Spice. The Hail Mary. And it was indeed deliberately pulled down. Nigel Whitehouse is just playing an advantage. My hand goes up, my hand goes up. Well, I think the game is safe, so, you know, I think they will go to, look at that, penalty because it's 13 in the second half, they've been a massive swing. And they're just going to go for the kill now, aren't they? <laughs> Tries, of course, can be very, very important because Munster and the Ospreys were level on points before this afternoon and you want to get those tries in the bank come the end of the season. And, of course, you know, Next up in the Heineken Cup for the Ospreys is a massive game, Munster away. And after another encounter a couple of weeks ago, and this conference uh, win for them, it's going to be a great game down in Munster. I think they can go there and win. Trying to lead his troops again. Look at him trying to smuggle that ball back. There he is. It is a shame that Barry Williams, you know, is retired from international rugby. I think he's playing his best rugby now. He seems to be enjoying it. And, you know, he should be in, you know, in contention for the, you know, for the Welsh job. It's a shame, it's, it's a shame that uh, at such a young age in his playing career, he's given it all up. Says a lot for his commitment to the Ospreys. That he said he'd be there for them when others would be away with Wales. He'd be there leading the team. And that's what he stuck to. Yeah, but you want to play international rugby, you don't care who you are. You know, you're retired a long time. It's more the Dwayne Peel we know. The pressure relieving kick. Still limping along after that hoofing he had earlier. That's Andy Lloyd. 
the very latest Osprey replacement. If I can get my words out. It's Ryan Jones returning the applause he receives from the null crowd. Not on, play the fight then. <laughs> he meant off the scrum half, the knock on first offence. Red ball, knock on. No advantage coming from Barry. It's another player who's had a lot of injuries in his young career. Ingate! One cap out in Japan three years ago. Oh, what a drive. What a drive from the Osprey back. The Scarlet, they disintegrated. Seve Ali. They have got numbers going left. Spice, Henson, Durston, Bishop. Straight out to Shane Williams. Hunting a hat trick. Good ball to Henson. Henson fending off Watkins. Spice, oh, but it was Gareth Bowen who appeared up on the blind side. Saved the day Ryan. for the Scarlets. You're just lazy, boys. Away. Yeah. You're just lazy, no. Walking back no lazy, wasn't he? Making no effort. Yeah, yeah, just lurking with intent. Wait on, no, no. As uh, the officer in Nigel it's Whitehouse would possibly put it. Enough. But he's done well, Nigel Whitehouse. He's, he's kept a very good iron things and he's bet kept very good control yeah he's refereed it very very well and like i said you know it's nice to have a, a welsh referee in charge of a welsh game you know i don't i don't care if, if he's from the area you know he's he's a referee yeah. and he refereed to the best yeah. of his ability and uh, I'm happy the ball's he understands the intensity yeah. intensity of this encounter you know the local rivalry and why should we have a scottish referee or an irish okay. referee time on Please. The now Scarlets wanted to claw something back, but they are being camped down near their own try line. Still a man short as the Ospreys look to twist the knife. Again, beat there was a target. Adam Jones this time. Leave it, rest, leave it, go recipient. I it's been smuggled back by Phil John. Leave it. Wayne Peel just oh, wanting men clear out the way. Here he goes, away and running. Duncan Jones trying to keep up with him. Good run by Peel though, away from the danger zone. Oh, so. be a bit of a catalyst for the Scarlets. Finau, Watkins, he's cut back inside and ball to Finau. Good cover tackle by Jonathan Thomas. Bowen trying to produce the angle for Andy Powell in between players. Again, good defence by the Ospreys. Vernon Cooper. David Jones right in there with him. And made it up to halfway. Bowen. Huge pass out to Finau. Bends off the Chipu. Bounces off David Bishop. No getting away from Elvis Sebayali. Not that is better than Flatley. No, that's the best that uh, they showed in the second half so far. It's not going to be enough though. Totally outplayed in this game. And Andy Newman coming on for Jonathan Thomas. And a bit of experience for a youngster. That's Richard Reese. And the 21 scrum half of last year, coming on for half a dozen minutes more, instead of Jason Spice. Change of scrum half as well for the Scarlets. Mike Phillips for Dwayne Peel. Yeah, about nine. Just keep it there, that's good. It has been a very, very tough afternoon for a scrum half behind the retreating pack. It's Dave Hewitt alongside him. John Davis has come on maybe a bit too late. Well, definitely too late to have any effect on the result. Time back on. Win on, please. No. Scarlett's back up to 15 men. No Chris Wyatt back on there though, it's Bryn Griffiths in the second row. 
Good tackle again by Henson. Unlucky for Richie Pugh, going for the one-handed pickup. Uh, but Henson lined Fino that time. I'll tell you what, he's a great spe physical specimen, Henson, and uh, he's rose to the challenge of Fino. And Fino in intimidates a lot of players, you know, for his ferocious running. And it's it's nice to see someone stand up to him. And he's really, you know, come off second best, doesn't he? Fino. Tackle is a bit high from Fino. That's nothing new. He's is there to get it away again to Barry Williams. Reese Henson. Darren Evans waits inside his own 22. There's time of plenty. And that's uh, well defended by the Scarlet captain. but no real injury there's the Osprey skipper who as always has given his all and listen to this yeah, he's played extremely well today deserves the applaud and Richard Hibbard the Swansea club hooker he's the one who gets a little bit more experience 21 year old Jones doing well, getting the youngsters on, getting them a big, a bit of big time play. Leave it, Rance, leave it, go, leave it. It's out. No, oh, you're in front of him from the knock on. Calvin Jones with a quick tap and go. Phillips to Matthew Reese. Selly on the outside. Selly motoring down the touchline. Confident to go for the corner. Great tackle. And that's Shane Williams has put the tackle in. That was a superb tackle, a lovely run from Selly. He was motoring, but that was a great tackle. Again, it's a great tackle. Maybe superb. head on the wrong side for any young viewers watching, but great cover. And it's an appropriate time to say that my man of the match is Shane Williams. Maybe we'll come back to that because the Ospreys are on the attack again. It was a lovely slip out the back door by Seveali to Bishop. Great dummy by Ricky Reese. Seveali comes up on the outside. Another dummy by Reese. Oh, great hands from Pew. This is sublime at times from the Ospreys. The support work is oh. top draw. Henson. Oh, asking a bit much of even Shane Williams in the end. He's done enough. Yeah, man of the match, Jonathan. Well, yeah, he's my man of the match. You know, he's created a couple of tries, scored a couple of tries, and um, he's just been magnificent. Every time he's come involved in play, something has happened. Duncan Jones run him close because Duncan Jones has totally destroyed, you know, Dave Hewitt and uh, Ruth Park. If I could give it to the pair of them, I would. But uh, Shane Williams has got to have it. And always be trained, great. Engage. Possibly with instructions to give Duncan Jones at least one glass of the bubbly. Powell. Phillips. As again, the Scarlets struggle to make headway. John Davis held by Adam Jones. Bryn Griffiths brought down by Andy Newman. Accidental. And again, a knock into their own man. It's happened so many times. The Scarlets during the course of the afternoon. Final minute of normal time. And it looks as though the Ospreys may have to settle for just a four. I think they will settle for those. Ricky Reese <laughs> did the first bit well, but he got another. He'll have another shot there because the Scarlets weren't back ten meters anyway. Hey, hey, leave it, leave it. Well, there's a couple of straps going on here now. Away. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Away. Hey, come away. Come, get away. Just go. 
Where you go? There's a bite in it to the Where end. You go? And the Ospreys who started off with seven straight wins at the beginning of the season saw things faltering with three defeats in four. And now they're back to winning ways. Very happy only on the way he's gone. I don't have any fingernails left, but uh, I'm very happy, you know, slightly worried the first 20 minutes of the game, but the discipline and the defence was superb. A tale of two coaches. Dave Tuetti gets a very limited opportunity. Sonny Parker makes way for whatever Nigel Whitehouse hands on for stoppages. Shane Williams lurking in midfield between the two replacement centres. Hibad. And there's been much more direction to the Osprey play. And even when things haven't gone according to plan, they've managed to recover and work it out again. That time though. A little bit too eager on the floor. Leave it, Tom, leave him. Mike Phillips makes for some scraps of comfort for the Scarlets. Gareth Bowen was a gap there for him. Kabili. Henson is the one covering back there in his own 22. Go, 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 go. And it's time to have a look. Justin in with a brave tackle. Helped by Dave Tuetti. Leave it, Leave it. It's slow ball for the Scarlets. Quality of the possession has left them floundering behind. Made no headway at all against this well marshaled Osprey defence. And another good tackle by Andy Newman. Peel to Gareth Bowen, Wyatt. I don't know why Gareth Bowen keeps on running down that channel, you know, the big four, they're just eating him up. David Jones doing well to step away from Brent Cobain. But Duncan Jones hasn't given up a single chase all afternoon. And well recovered by Cobain as well as Shane Williams. Yes. He could sniff for hat trick then, and Mike Phillips needed to hang on to him. Yeah. It's getting a bit niggly now, isn't it? Leave it down. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah, it's been a very physical game right throughout, but. Uh, it has, as you say, niggly is the right word for the latter stages. Great. So we had six minutes Again. at the end of the first half. And it's getting up towards that kind of period again in the second. Andy Lloyd. Beaten to it by David Jones that time. Yeah, lost control at the back. Play on. Mike Phillips battling hey. onwards again. And it has been a battle for the Scarlets. Nothing has come easy for them. David Jones has scrum half. Oh, Bowen drops it. Advantage. It. Not anymore. There's no fun here. Nigel Whitehouse has a look at his wrist uh, watch and decides. It's time to blow the whistle for the final time. That is a very convincing win indeed for the Ospreys. Yeah, very, very comfortable, you know. This man, when he came into the game, something happened. Created uh, one try, scored two, didn't he? So, and that was the difference. It was the, the cutting edge that the Ospreys had over Clenetley. Comprehensive win for the Ospreys. The South Wales Evening Post Challenge Cup goes to the Ospreys, but more importantly, the four league points and the bonus point for scoring four tries. They are the ones who'll be celebrating going into the new year. It's finished at the Knoll, Ospreys 28, Scarlet 7.